Welcome. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com with your eye-opener report for BoilingFrogsPost.com. In mid-2012, in the wake of the ratification of ACTA and the proposal in the US of bills like SOPA and PIPA, in an age where the war on terror is gradually morphing into a cyber war and database hacks, password leaks, and identity thefts are reported on breathlessly, it is difficult to imagine the promise that the very idea of the internet once aroused in the public. Just 20 years ago, in the age of the much-vaunted information superhighway, people could pontificate with a straight face on the potential for online communities to give rise to a Jeffersonian revolution and spawn a new flowering of civic participation. Right now, for example, millions of computer literate Americans are participating in thousands of electronic communities through services like Prodigy, America Online, the Internet. They're playing games with each other. They're exchanging opinions on books. They're fantasizing about sex. They're also searching for their birth parents, and they're finding allies for their political causes. When the interactive power of today's computer is put inside tomorrow's television set, and when it becomes as easy to access as a few flicks on a remote control, the impact could be literally revolutionary. This type of medium could enable uh, a Jeffersonian uh, revolution in our civic life by empowering individuals and communities to communicate with each other, to take action. Quaint as such optimism might seem to a jaundiced modern eye, to some extent that promised revolution has arrived in the birth of an alternative media that has already begun to eclipse outdated forms of information distribution. Once confined to the information accessible from local libraries, daily newspapers, and what was commonly known as the idiot box, the general public is now able to instantaneously access vast amounts of information on even the most obscure topics with merely a few keystrokes and a few clicks of the mouse. From the yearly proceedings of the Bilderberg Group to the hidden history of the establishment of the Federal Reserve, subjects that once would have been virtually impossible to research are now readily available to anyone with a computer and an internet connection, or even just a smartphone. But given the increasingly draconian measures that are being proposed to block, track, control, monitor, and censor communications on the internet, it is almost impossible to be as optimistic about the future of this technology as we once were. Did you know the average user has 25 online accounts with multiple usernames and passwords? But with laptop thefts increasing dramatically, and the growing concern for identity theft, passwords are becoming an issue that people worry about. That's why your fingerprint is a lot better than a password. This week, the Obama administration pressed ahead with plans to create an internet identification system for Americans. Now, the idea is still in the planning stages, but it appears the government wants to set up a system that lets users create a single secure online account. Government officials meant to seize 10 web domains for distributing child pornography, but accidentally took down, wait for it, 84,000. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security's Operation Protect Our Children mistakenly seized the innocent shared domains from Moo.com, which hosts blogs and small business websites. The government announced a plan in 2008 to put in place a filter to block websites showing things such as child pornography or instructions to commit crimes. If it goes ahead, Australia would become the first Western democracy to have such a mechanism. There's outrage in the UK over government plans to spy on anyone using the internet. The proposed electronic surveillance network could keep track of every online message sent in Britain, including emails, mobile texts and social media. The government says it'll help tackle crime and terrorism, but critics insist it's Big Brother in overdrive. This is not to say, of course, that the future of the internet painted by these scenarios is set in stone. As always, we the people can and will be the deciding factor in how the future unfolds, and whether it becomes an Orwellian nightmare, or a new flowering of human potential. On the most basic level, there is an argument to be made that the technology of the police state itself is unworkable. A bunch of pipe dreams and hocus-pocus designed to get the public to fear the government, but which is ultimately, like the Wizard of Oz, nothing more than smoke and mirrors. After all, Biometric technology is notoriously unreliable. Jamie makes new gel prints, and then it's all ready to test. This time, the computer doesn't reject it straight away. It reads it, reads it some more, 
And then... Access granted. Yay! We got it. Yes? Yes. Dude! He just made my day. Domain name censorship is bothersome to work around, but by no means impossible. Our benevolent overlords in government have to protect us from dangerous information and have been shutting down websites. But this company, Mafia, M-A-F-I-A-A, -A, created a plugin, an add-on to Firefox called Fire, to the Firefox web browser, that lets you get around these bans, these seizures, because what it does is it takes you immediately to an alternative domain. So when you go to a banned website, instead of seeing this domain has been seized by yada 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 and all the crap legal jargon that they put up there when they do that, you're automatically taken to a mirrored site. Internet filtering schemes that have been tested in Australia and elsewhere have been dismal failures. Well, it's interesting. The government has done testing um, ever since 1989. They've engaged the CSIRO, RMIT, OVM, um, a couple of tests with Enex Test Lab, and now they're about to start some live trials. Every single one of those tests say the same answers, which, mm. which is what you just related to me then, which is that it doesn't work, it slows the internet down, it's, it's expensive, you end up with overblocking and underblocking problems. And every time they get a test that, that says something like that, they go, hmm, I don't like the answer, let's do another test. And it is not at all certain how an internet ID can be constructed in any way that will not make identity theft more likely and more damaging. I mean, again, we don't have the details, but it is or could be the master key, uh, because right now, at least if you use different passwords on different shopping sites uh, and different bank accounts and PayPal sites, if you lose one, your entire online identity is not compromised. But here, uh, if the master key is lost, then someone could impersonate you quite well and run up a lot of credit card charges and in the worst case scenario, even uh, debit your bank account. But the argument against the technology itself as compelling as it is, is not the issue. One day, perhaps reliable biometric technology will be developed. Perhaps some evil genius government-funded scientist will figure out how to make internet filtering work, or will overcome internet ID challenges. The point is not that these systems are unworkable, but that the idea itself of monitoring, censorship, and restriction goes against the potential of that Jeffersonian revolution that we once saw in the technology itself the ability for people to become informed, motivated, and active in like-minded communities without the need of the New York Times or HarperCollins or ABC. We shouldn't kid ourselves about the challenges that we face in the coming years. It was a small oligarchical faction that by and large shaped the public's understanding of the world in the previous information paradigm one in which a handful of centralized corporate entities controlled almost all of the information that the average person read, heard, or watched on any given day. That faction's constituency congregates at the CFR, or Chatham House, or Bilderberg, and they are still economically powerful. The media moguls, corporate chieftains, and corrupt politicians who have the most to lose in this information revolution know which side their bread is buttered on, and know that in order to maintain the control over society that they once enjoyed, they will have to restrict the freedom we presently enjoy online. Whether that is through internet ID or domain level censorship or something else entirely, we know that our ability to exchange information freely online is a freedom that we cannot take lightly. That is why, for instance, the support of websites like this one is so crucial in this day and age. Without people supporting the websites, authors, bloggers, and alternative media entities that they love, the system will cease to function on its own without even the threat of censorship from above. Even more importantly, for this information revolution to mean anything at all, people will have to take responsibility for how they use their time online and where they invest their dollars. Every time we give into a new scheme, even something as innocuous as a login with Facebook feature on a website, we are freely volunteering to give up our own online freedom and anonymity for the sake of convenience. By using Google and Facebook and YouTube and Twitter, we acquiesce in the creation of a highly centralized system that is, in reality, a mirror image of the corporate media spiderweb that used to confine us. And when we have given our time, money, and attention to make those sites into what they are, they can turn around and give our data to the government agencies that have always lusted after it, even as they censor or block any information that the governments find troublesome all via classified agreements that the public never gets to see and only seldom know exists. 
for ultimately it is our actions now, today, on the internet that will decide the future of the web. Either we understand the responsibility that comes with our online freedom, a responsibility to seek out alternatives to centralized control, a responsibility to avoid default settings or standardized procedures that are meant to control our actions or limit our chances and our choices, a responsibility to refuse to give in to government-mandated censorship or media-hyped cyber-terror boogeymen, and to make the internet into the Jeffersonian revolution we once believed it was, or we accept the fate of a controlled, hobbled version of the internet that we can already see being laid out before us. This video is brought to you by the subscribers of BoilingFrogsPost.com. For more information on this and other topics, please go to BoilingFrogsPost.com. For more information and commentary from James Corbett, please go to CorbettReport.com.